Oh my god. I can't stop fucking eating it. God damn it. This is my go-to weeknight Korean dish. It's really easy. Everything comes together in about half an hour, but it really only requires about 10 minutes of your time. This Korean dish is perfect for people who are wanting to get introduced to Korean food or who are relatively picky. This uses two very familiar ingredients to a lot of people. At the very core, this is still very much a Korean meal. Today, we are doing a Korean potato stew. In Korean, it's called kamjajaguri. So the basis for for a Korean meal, it's very simple. It's always a soup or a stew and rice. It's that simple. This is super easy, very little prep. Honestly, all you do is dump a bunch of stuff into a pan and let it go for half an hour and you're good to go. So this to me is very similar to like a slow cooker recipe and it's just loaded with flavor. Let's just get right into it. Let's go over our fresh ingredients, things that we will need to prep. Two potatoes here, there's golden potatoes. It can really be any potato. It's totally up to you if you want to peel off the skin or not. I'm leaving them on because I've never had an issue with them, but if you're not about that life, go ahead and rip them off, whatever, peel them off. Also, I'm lazy as hell, so I don't want to peel a potato today. Underneath that, I have half an onion that we're just going to slice up, and then I have green onion. Now, you're probably going to be like, what the f***? Look how big this shit is, okay? Hey guys, this is only half of it. So this is a Korean green onion. It's called tepa. Like I said with my green onions, right? The bottom part, the white part, is where most of the flavor is. So we're only going to use this. The flavor is actually different than a regular green onion. If the flavor profile of green onion is here and a regular onion, this tepa, the Korean green onion, is right about the middle. It looks like a leek, but it tastes very different from a leek. So don't use a leek here. If you can't find this, just go ahead and use normal green onion. We're looking for about a cup's worth. Honestly, the more the better. So yeah, that's the only vegetables we're prepping. Everything else is pantry items or things that you just measure out and you're good to go. And the next component of this stew is a meat. You have two choices here. I just got back from vacation and I ate like shit. Today I'm using impossible meat, tried and true, like it's whatever. It has the flavor in here. You need to use some sort of meat or meat substitute because you do need to bring out flavor from something. Otherwise this might taste a little bland. I'm sure you could do it without it, but I just haven't done that before and I'm not willing to do that. <laughs> I'm using 12 ounces of possible meat or originally a can of Spam. And that might freak some people out who've never had Spam, but Spam's actually very popular in Korea. I find Spam is the most delicious version of this. However, just note that if you don't use Spam, Spam is very salty, you have to use salt. Because I'm using impossible meat today, I am going to use salt, otherwise don't even bother with salt. Then we move it over to our dry ingredients. We have gochugaru, which is Korean red pepper flake. We'll use two tablespoons gochugaru and one tablespoon of brown sugar. Garlic pre Mince. This is Korean style. I don't know if you can see, but it is way finer than what you find at a regular American grocery store. It's more garlicky and less sour. I mean, definitely use other pre minced garlic or chop up your own, whatever. We're only going to use a tablespoon here. Four tablespoons of soy sauce. We have gochujang and doenjang. Gochujang is a spicy red chili paste. We'll use one tablespoon of this. And then below is lesser known doenjang. It's soybean paste. So if you're familiar with miso, it's kind of the same concept, but they actually taste quite different. If you don't have doenjang, you can just use more gochujang. Just know that it'll be a bit more spicy. Other than the ingredients in this bowl, everything just stays fresh in the fridge or in your pantry for forever. It's totally worth just going and buying these, so it's no big deal. The reason why this is so easy is because it's super simple. So this here is a Korean soup spoon, but I'm going to use this to measure out everything today. We'll start with our dry ingredients and we'll go to our wet ingredients and then our paste and so you can cook measure and eat all with one spoon obviously we're gonna cover this with water the measurement there isn't exact either right you just pour enough to cover it and that's it I'm just using this kind of deep I don't even know what the fuck to call this it's just like a deep saucepan you can even use a frying pan because I've, I've used mine in the past but I really want to use this because I think this will be better with the high walls the prep is super easy because you'll chop something up 
throw it in here. You'll measure something up, throw it in here, pour in the water, put it on medium, and forget about it for half an hour. And then while this is cooking, we'll actually go ahead and make some rice. And you just need to step aside, do whatever you want to do for 20 to 30 minutes, and you have dinner. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to prep our three vegetables. We'll start with the potatoes first. I'm gonna cut these into about one inch chunks. The smaller you go, the faster the potatoes cook. This dish really is done when the potatoes are done. So if you want to get this done faster, by all means cut them smaller. Throw them straight into the pot. After that, we're gonna start with our green onion. I got this big guy here, cut off the roots, and then cut it in half lengthwise, and then I'm gonna chop to get these really small bits. Next, with your half onion, we're just gonna cut into relatively thin slices throw them straight into the pot. So that's it with your cutting board, so you can set that aside. Now we're going to prep our impossible meat or spam. I'm just gonna try to break this apart with using my thumbs while it's still in its wrapper. Dump it straight into the pot with a pinch of salt too if you're using impossible meat. If you're using spam, you can totally skip this step. And then I'm actually gonna break this apart with my hands to try to get it even smaller. So we'll do two tablespoons of gochugaru. You can cut this down to one if your spice tolerance isn't very good. Then I'm going to do one tablespoon of brown sugar. So that's that's it for the dry ingredients. We'll move over to kind of our wetter ingredients. We'll start off with the minced garlic next, one tablespoon of that. And then we'll do four tablespoons of soy sauce. And this is kind of your base. Definitely when we get down to the last minutes of cooking, we're going to taste and season with additional soy sauce if necessary. Lastly, we're going to do our pastes. One tablespoon of gochujang, and then half a tablespoon of tuenjang. And these are pretty sticky, which is why we waited to use Use them last and then now just pour the water kind of all over you don't need to measure out the water just make sure everything is submerged enough so it cooks now you bring it over to your stovetop put it on high heat wait for it to come to a boil and when it does stir everything up make sure the gochujang and the tuenjang dissolve well reduce the heat to medium and let this go for 30 minutes what you're looking for is until the potatoes have become soft and that almost all of the liquid has evaporated so while that's going I'm going to just cook some rice, put that in my rice cooker and let it go. The rice and the potato stew kind of finish up at the same exact time and that's freaking sweet. Just stir the potato stew every once in a while to make sure nothing burns, especially towards the end of cooking where there's not a ton of liquid. If you feel like the potatoes are soft but there's still quite a bit of liquid left, you can raise up the heat like I did here. But otherwise, try to keep it around medium heat. Scoop up some potato stew into a bowl. I topped off my potato stew with some green onion to make it look fancy and then another bowl. To Dish up your rice, and then some kimchi on the side if you'd like. And that's it, your potato stew, kamja chaguri. Boy, I'm so excited guys. Here we go, Korean potato stew, super simple. So basically the best way to eat this is you just put it on top of your rice like so, and then you top it off with a little bit of kimchi, and there we go. Oh my god, they're so good. The potatoes basically become like mashed potatoes, which who doesn't like mashed potatoes? Because of the potatoes, it releases its starch and thickens up with the stew, and it just becomes amazing. I mean, potatoes, rice, meat, like what can go wrong? It is on the spicy side, so just keep a heads up there. Mm, good golly. Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy right now. Like the way you kind of eat Korean food, you keep everything separate and you put it together as you're eating and not necessarily mix it up all at once. You can do whatever you want, like you made this food, like you eat it however the fuck you want. This is my first time making it with impossible meat and it turned out very well. I'm gonna keep on eating this, I guess. So there we go, guys. Korean potato stew. This is Korea's version of meat and potatoes. It's become one of my favorites, honestly. This recipe is an adaptation of a Korean chef, Hek Chong Won. He's basically a Korean Gordon Ramsay, except nice. So super easy weeknight meal. I will say this, like if you don't have tuenjang or gochujang, you can't really make this. But if you buy them, they last in the fridge for over a year and they are used quite a bit in a bunch of other Korean Korean recipes so it's not just for this recipe I can't reiterate enough that you get so much return on like very little effort and that's what this channel's all about right we want to get you tasty food without busting your balls any hoosers hoof the I'm full let me know what you want to see next thank you so much for watching please like comment subscribe and I will see you next time thank you bye bye nice